we find homeless and neglected in every city today. We also spend a lot of time trying, discussing, trying to find solutions to eradicate homelessness in every city. We have a person today who has found time, who has also started a movement to eradicate, so also to provide with the necessities to the homeless and the less fortunate. Welcome, welcome to Wordnet Productions. I'm Father Sony Sebastian, and I would like to introduce to you someone who has spent a lot of time trying to bring a little joy in the lives of the hundreds of homeless in our cities, and especially in the cities of Los Angeles, San Bernardino, Riverside, and in the Southern California area. It is none other than Zaki Mustafa. Thank you, Father. Can I call you Mustafa or Zaki? I like Zaki, Zaki. better. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome to Wordnet, Zaki. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thanks for accepting our invitation and come and share this beautiful experience and everything that you do. I, you know, when I was going through your bio, I see that you are an engineer who worked with the Los Angeles City in designing the traffic system. Well, what did you do? I spent about 33 years with City of LA Department of Transportation, uh -huh. and uh, the later part of the career, we were I was in charge of both the design and the construction and planning aspects of the city. Uh, we were responsible for getting grants and putting in um, bike lanes, installing signals. Uh, uh, installing always stop signs, basically listening to the community and hearing what they were going through and trying to help them improve their quality of life by providing answers to their needs. And that could be by installing signals, by installing crosswalks, by adjusting the timing for the parking for their community. And Just basically installing even speed bumps? I did the very first, we did the very first ones, yes, to slow down the slow traffic. Slow down the traffic, yeah. Right, traffic calming. Uh, I was involved with uh, uh, initiatives where we try to reduce fatalities in the city. But it's been a joy um, working for the city of mm -hmm. LA. Your wife is also involved in the same kind of, she's also an engineer and uh, right. involved she, with a similar, similar well, kind of job, I just right? did traffic. My wife is the brain. She's. She was a city Are engineer. Are you trying to be uh, humble and? No, <laughs> I really mean it because I was just involved with traffic. Okay. And city engineer is responsible for not only traffic but also sanitation, mm -hmm. for uh, uh, everything that goes on in the city. Mm -hmm. And like my son right now, he's responsible for city of Riverside. He's a deputy public works director, mm -hmm. which is one step above what my wife and I did. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, no, she no, really did that. Ex, you know, make me understand, because I'm, I'm uh. just a poor, uh, you know, <laughs> person, drive, let's say, person who just drives, uses our streets, mm -hmm. you know, going from one place to the other. How do you organize all this, and what do you do? Well, when I was there, what we had is room, uh, it's called ATSAC. It's an automatic traffic control surveillance system where you can control all the traffic signals from one central locations. And at that time, our goal was to optimize the signal so if you start at this end of the block or this end of the city, you're able to drive this corridor without having to stop. That was the ultimate goal and controlling it all from one central location. Mm -hmm. So that was our ATSEC system, and we started that back in 1984. And uh, all the signals were synchronized and also uh, hooked up to one central location. And the whole idea behind it is to reduce emission. Okay. So if the car is stopping Stop. all the time, it's producing carbon monoxide, it's yeah, producing yeah, yeah. pollution. 
And if we were to get you to go in a s nice, steady, steady speed, you're not stopping <coughs> and go. Every time you start from stopping and go, you're producing it, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah, a, gr a great number of, a great amount of footprints yeah. on carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide. And, and uh, that was our goal. That was one uh -huh. of the things. But overall, it was improving or helping with the quality of life. Zaki, let me, uh, let me ask you, this is, again, uh -huh. ignorance. Uh -huh. uh, forgive me for that. Uh -huh. I see sometimes when I'm driving or when I'm walking, you know, by th using the sidewalk, I see sometimes there are these guys with a kind of a tripod and they have a machine and they are looking, they are watching something. Uh, what do they do? Are they trying to do some kind of survey or? Well, uh, those are surveyors yeah. and usually that's done for construction of buildings or the road to make sure that It has nothing to do with the number of traffic, no, you know, vehicles. No. Every city has their own policy. Mm -hmm. Uh, in the city of LA, we had our policy where we, we would look at the timing, how many cars are going through, and where is the next signal. Yeah, and that's where I was asking, how do you find out the timing and how many cars pass through a particular uh, you know, intersection? There is a software that we used to use oh, for. Okay. Our engineers used to use that to calculate how many seconds of red, how many seconds of yellow, how many seconds of green you're going to have so that you can have that progression. But that was a long time ago. <laughs> that was so you don't, you, they don't use that anymore? No, I, I'm sure they do, but I'm, I, have, I haven't, my, myself haven't done it oh, okay, in a okay, while. Okay. But I, I know a lot of the small cities, they're mm -hmm. still doing it. So you guys have the brain behind all, <laughs> all these uh, movements that we have of traffic in our cities. Yes, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> ah, well, no, 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 no. I wouldn't want to say unfortunately, you know, it's a great job and it's a, it's a you know, there's a lot of planning and right. study uh, goes behind that designing. But thank you for doing that, oh you know, no. so that we have a free, at least trying to get a free flowing traffic without any accidents. Right, right. and that was the goal when I was working, is to improve the quality of life yeah, yeah, yeah. for the people, for the residents, for the constituents. Well, in spite of all of that, we have a lot of traffic jams that takes place in our cities. Yes, you're correct. Uh, I don't know what the cities are doing now as far as keeping up that progression, mm -hmm. signal synchronization. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have no idea what mm -hmm. they're doing, mm -hmm. but I do see that a lot, that I'm stopping at every <laughs> single signal, and I get frustrated. Well, I go, what is going on? Something <laughs> happened with another signal in your life. You got stopped. And that changed your life, and you, you began something so beautiful to support the homeless. Tell uh, us that. Well, God's what was that signal? So God's amazing as to what He does, and we never have any control of where we're going to be. I never thought my wife and I would be doing something like what we're doing. So, right before retirement, um, on Christmas 2016, my wife had given me a leather jacket. And I used to take the bus or the train from Montclair to U LA Union Station. And I'd get to work like about 5.45 in the morning. And this one morning, uh, after she gave me the jacket, I saw this guy almost butt naked in front of City Hall. So I gave him my jacket. And of course, when I got home, my wife goes, ah, he didn't like that jacket. I go, no, the guy was really cold. And he needed something to keep him warm. Mm -hmm. So then she goes, you know, you're always asking for money from your friends for student scholarships. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you ask your friends to give you some money for the jackets? Mm -hmm. I go, okay, that's a great idea. So I put it up on Facebook, and what I did is there was a lady uh, that used to live in um, our City Hall Mall. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I went up to her and I asked her, hey, can I take a picture of you? And uh, I'm going to use it to raise some money for the jackets. She goes, sure. So we put that up on Facebook and within a few days throughout the nation, my friends that were city traffic engineers mm -hmm. from throughout the nation, they donated a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And then the following week, Monday, I went shopping in downtown LA. Mm -hmm. And as I went from store to store, I walked into this one lady's shop and she was a wholesaler and I showed her what I was doing and she starts crying. Mm -hmm. I go, oh my gosh, what did I do? Did I offend you for so by saying something mm -hmm. wrong? She goes, no, it's just that I don't want to give them money. And I just heard the year of mercy message from Bishop Barnes. I go, Bishop Barnes, 
Hey, he's yeah, my Bishop, bishop Barnes, too. Yeah, she's B Bishop Barnes used to be the bishop of the Diocese of San Bernardino. Right. Now he's the Emeritus Bishop. Right. Yeah. And he had that message at that time, that year, the year of mercy. Mm -hmm. And it touched her. And so she gave me a couple hundred jackets for free. And then mm -hmm. she showed me how much her cost was. Wonderful. Four, five, six dollars. I go, wow, this is a tag of hundred dollars or fifty dollars. She goes, well, that's the store's tag. So I brought all those jackets back, and then the following Valentine's week, w my friends and I went around City Hall. There were a lot of homeless people there, and we gave them the jackets. In Los Angeles, in downtown, downtown Los LA, Angeles. Yeah. Uh, City Hall. And uh, our city newspaper did a little story on it, and I didn't think much of it, mm -hmm. okay? Okay, that's good. That April, one of my friends who works with me, she mm -hmm. came into my desk and she, throws this stack of paper first thing in the morning on my desk. Oh. Was and she trying to tell you something? I, I go, what is this, a complaint? <laughs> 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 what did I do? She goes, no, I know you and your wife are going to retire this June. Uh -huh. This is what you and your wife are going to do after you retire. I go, what is this? This is your nonprofit. I go, have you ever done this before? She goes, no, I looked it up in the internet. I go, OK. And what about the name, Tr mm. Transforming a Life? Is that available? And she goes, no, it's, our, it's your job to find out. So we typed it into the, in the system, uh -huh. and lo and behold, that name was available. Uh -huh. So um, I was excited. I came home, told my wife about what we're going to do, and she goes, you know, I don't know about that name. My wife is very smart, and she had about four pages of names <laughs> that she came up with, but they were all taken. Oh. And that was starting in 2017. Uh -huh. The preface behind our nonprofit is basically 100% that we collect from you for the cause goes to the cause. All the administrative cost behind it is my wife's and my donation. And God is amazing how every time I run into an obstacle, like trying to find a vehicle to deliver the jackets mm -hmm. with, I get something. Or f finding, needing a place to <coughs> store the jackets. Friends come over, built me a barn. Uh, or I can't find the jackets that I want to give out. I get a call from another vendor saying, hey, come get it. It's just how he works is truly amazing. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you said it, you started this one in 2017. 17, yes. What's the name of the nonprofit? The nonprofit is called Transforming a Life. Transforming a Life. Transforming yeah. a Life. Does that have anything to do with the shirt that you're wearing? You no, have a logo doesn't. on it. Well, this is, when I was working, I used to be the international president of Institute of Transportation Engineers. Oh, okay. And there's a bicycle on it. There's a bicycle because we try to promote multimodal mm -hmm. biking, walking, taking the bus, and driving. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But this is, without this group, they're the ones that had donated that $3,000 $3, initially. initially. And without that, I would not have been able to mm -hmm, do what mm -hmm, we're doing mm -hmm, now. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't have had the energy or the courage uh -huh, uh -huh. to do it. And because right now, I have friends in New Jersey, New York, North Carolina, South Carolina, mm -hmm, Oregon, mm -hmm. Utah, Idaho, Florida, everywhere in the country, they're helping me in giving the warmth to the homeless. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I also have the Knights, Knights of Columbus. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to talk about that. You know, you are also involved with uh, when I was going through your bio, I found that you are involved with uh, Knights of Columbus and right. uh, Salvation Army, so also with St. Vincent de Paul Society right. and all of that. We'll come to that. Mm -hmm. But uh, so, uh, you know, speaking about uh, the uh, nonprofit that you and your wife started, Transforming a Life. Transforming a Life. A Life. Right. Um, it's, a, it's a beautiful title, Transforming, Changing. Right. Um, and to your main target or your main focus is to to bring some kind of joy and happiness for the in the life of a homeless, right? Correct. And we started something different about two years ago. Uh -huh. I got a call from Sister Chile two years ago in uh -huh. January saying Chile, huh? she's the the um, director for the social 
development I right, think, in, in the, the diocese, diocese of San Bernardino. Yeah. She indicated that, hey, the bishop would like to help out the migrant workers in Coachella, Coachella Valley. but they need food and uh -huh. they need formulas. Mm -hmm. They need food for the homeless. Yeah, formula yeah. for the children. Formula for the children. Yeah. So then we started doing that two years ago. So now in the, begin in the beginning of the year, we do a food drive. Oh. And, and um, after that, we start the jacket drive. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I usually take out a loan at the beginning of the year and I buy the jackets. Mm -hmm. And then we start the fundraiser in June, July. But that food drive that we did two years ago, I put it up on Facebook saying, hey, I need, I got a call from the diocese. I need help in getting formulas mm -hmm. and food for the uh, babies. And there's a group that I help out, Salvation Army. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I get a call from them saying, bring your van and fill it up. Yeah. Zaki, hold your thoughts. We will get into all those uh, you know, details about the program, especially now, not only just with the jackets, but food for the food for the needy. Uh, but we are going to take a short break, and okay. when we come back, we'll continue with that discussion, with that sharing. Okay. Thank I you. hope you are enjoying the the sharing with by Zaki Zaki Mustafa. Uh, we will also find out which parish he belongs and what are the uh, kind of involvement that he has in the parish as well, because you must be wondering how could a Mustafa be a Catholic. <laughs> Stay tuned. Do you want to fall in love with God? I'm sure we all want to. The book of Psalms contains the directions. Thousands of years ago, people like you and me talked to God out of the depths of their hearts, revealing an intimate love. Psalms are the expression of the faith in God by people around 3,000 years ago. God was not a mere abstract creator, but was present, involved, and a real person of power and emotions. Now, when we read or listen to the Psalms, we can know the intensity of this love. Entering into the influence of the Psalms, we can find a path to know and love God. To know more about the Psalms, you should get a copy of Father Mike Manning's booklet, The Psalms. It will help you to understand the 150 Psalms better as he has categorized them. He uses the technique of acts, adoration, contrition, thanksgiving, and supplication. Get your copy today and know the categories. Learn to pray with the Psalms. Call the number on the screen or email us. You can also get it through our website. Get your copy today. Welcome back. We've been listening from Zaki, uh, who from being a traffic designer, engineer, to now trying to design in a way you know, change, design, lives of those people who are less fortunate in our cities. Uh, Saki, thanks for sharing your life oh, with welcome. us. Oh, you're welcome. You're uh, welcome. You know, in passing, we spoke about your name, Mustafa. And uh, I know Mustafa is always a name that is attached to being a Muslim. Um, how, or in, sh in, a, in, a, in a small little way, share with us your transformation or your change from being a Muslim to a Catholic? Well, long story, but I'll be real brief. Yeah. Uh, when our kids were born, uh, we wanted to have faith in their life. Mm -hmm. And um, I wanted something that I can share with them that I really was passionate about mm -hmm. and I felt good about. The babysitter that was taking care of our kids they had, I think, two-bedroom house, but their house was just full of love. Mm -hmm. And they were so giving, and they had so little. Mm -hmm. But the love and the sharing that they had was what I wanted to have in my life. So my wife and I, you know, we started going, and we went to their church, but it was kind of different after we went there. It was like, Everybody else is going to die and go to hell if you don't believe what they believed in. 
And I don't think that's true because my mm -hmm. mom prays three times a day, mm -hmm. four times a day. Exactly. five Th times a day. Yeah, uh, there's no way she's going to hell. Yeah. So we started going from different p churches, and then we went to St. Anthony in Upland, and uh -huh. I ran into Father Ned. Yeah. And I, when he showed me the Eucharist, and I just felt that love and uh, I felt something in my, ch in my heart. Mm -hmm. And I really thought, yeah, this is what we want to do. And my wife, she was going through RCIA, uh -huh. and I started going through RCIA, and lo and behold, uh, we became very active with St. Anthony. Uh, and then we moved to Ranch of Cucamonga at St. Peter, St. Paul. And we've been involved with St. Peter, St. Paul for a long time. Mm. My wife teaches RC. She was a children's formation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, she's very active. She's with the school board. I used to be in charge of the parish council with the Knights, the Boy Scouts, and uh, uh, St. Vincent de Paul. We try to get the different ministries within the church to go out and help the homeless. Uh, the ministries come to our place to help us sort up jackets mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and foods. I done food collection at the church and uh, without St. Peter, St. Paul, we wouldn't have this nonprofit either because they're, they're back bone. They're, back, uh, they're helping me. Without yeah. their help, I couldn't do it either. Yeah, yeah. Zaki, um, what in your opinion is the reason for all our homelessness because it is it is not decreasing it is increasing day by day don't you think so you have been involved with the homelessness for i, I want to give you an example yeah we're at saint peter saint paul okay it's a pretty nice community uh -huh. okay a few years back we did a easter egg hunt at our parish mm -hmm. at that time father ogu was a priest and father ogu he has this well, he goes to all the different families mm -hmm. and thanks them for coming. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we did a little hamburger, hot dog, and mm -hmm. kids' toys, and mm -hmm. an Easter egg hunt on Easter. This one family that I've, been, that I've seen over the years at our parish, and I've taken many pictures of their kids growing up. He had four kids. Mm -hmm. Goes up to Father Ogu, goes, Father Ogu, for the last few months, we've been living in the car. He had a problem with his job. He was going through a hard time. Mm -hmm. And he's thanking Father Ogu for having this little get together with hamburger and hot dogs at the park at our parish. And he goes, if it wasn't for that, he would have nothing for the kids for Easter. So, but he came out of that. He was able to find a job. He was able to secure a good job. And they're out of living from the car. But we have a lot of p friends, people out there, friends in need, that have mental issues. Mm. And mental, we need to help. We need to see what we can do mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to get them help so they want to be helped. And what my wife and I f see every day, we're in the background. We have over 500 people helping us out nationwide. And I hear that from just about everyone. Hey, Zaki, you wouldn't believe it when we took the jacket to them. And now what we're asking is that when you take clothing, take some food with you. Uh, I like to have them go to a shelter. I, I think people should go to a sh shelter, shelter and seek help there. But that's the biggest, biggest compliment or stories that I hear is that, hey, we never experienced this love in our heart until we gave that simple $10, $5 jacket to them or the meal. And that, that gets them hooked and they want to do more. That's, I mean, when we first started, we, there was a few people helping us out. Now we have over 500 nationwide. No, That's the I, I appreciate you, Zaki, for what you do. You know, there is, there is a, that in everyone, which I have personally experienced, there is also a certain amount of detest that we have towards homeless people. Um, because uh, they are not clean, they are smelling, um, you know, so many things attached to. But 
I don't think anyone, as you mentioned, you know, I don't think any individual wants to be on the street. You know, there is a lot of insecurity. They never know what's going to happen. Right. They don't. They don't know where they are going to spend the night. Right. Uh, but at the same time, they are there. They have mm -hmm. no other choice. Right. Right. They have no choice, uh, and we as society need to help. Yeah. And it, one person can't solve it. No. All of us need to we work. We have to do it choice. collectively. Yeah. Together, we can solve this. Yeah, we have to do it collectively. I'm so happy that you are involved with this kind of a ministry, and I know Thank you, you are me. also involved. Uh, you know, along with this, you are also involved with the Knights of Columbus, you know, with the Salvation Army, with the uh, St. Vincent de Paul Society. You know, keep doing the good work that you are doing you, and Father. your wife because, uh, well, the words of Christ from the Gospel of Matthew, where Jesus says, the best thing that you can do is if you can give a glass of cold water to your brother or sister. Right. Nothing else is important. That right. is very important. That and is. you are bringing that that joy to the to the you know fa the face of a lot of people that Thank we you, have. But if your viewer wants to help out in helping the homeless, or going out there and sharing the warmth with them, uh, look us up on Facebook or uh, on our website and just have them give me a call. My phone rings 24 hours a day except when I'm rocking the baby or putting the baby to sleep. Uh, and, you know, just take some jackets and go give it to the homeless, uh, not, to the shelter. I, I, I want people to go to a shelter. We have a lot of shelters over here. Right around here we have Mary's Mercy Center, mm -hmm. Mary's Village, Mary's Veronica's Village. Home. Mm -hmm. Mary's Village just opened up. It's a beautiful facility. Veronica's Home, they're taking care of the moms and the uh, young kids and Mary's Mercy Center where we're feeding uh, a lot of the homeless people and they come there for a shower. If somebody wants to to get in touch with Zaki, please, his uh, email, his uh, website, so also the contact number is on the screen. Uh, you'll be able to do that. So also if you want to contact him, call us. We will put you in touch with him as well through our uh, you know, ministry here. I hope you enjoyed this uh, time with Zaki. I want to thank him for coming to the studio and sharing his life, his faith journey, and his ministry of bringing something to those who are in need. Thank you. Thank you, Father. And thank uh, you. thanks to all of you for spending this time with us. Please do support one another. We need each other. And let's do that through prayers. So also with however we can support this ministry as well so that we can bring the message to many more. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Be safe and may the Lord continue to bless you and your family. Thank you.